Uh, Stephanie, your question, you know, about what are some of those stories that really um, get us, that uh, get asked a lot. And so it's interesting, Mr. Yoshino, you know, you mentioned the, the, there's a chapter where he, we talked about the leadership credo. And actually, the more I talk about the, the book in like by leading to learn accelerator program, you know, the companion course that goes through with the book. Um, and in the workbook, it, I have an exercise for people to develop their own leadership credos. That story is becoming more, um, people are really interested in that because about how do you, what's your purpose as a leader? What are the actions you want to take to align with that? But the, the story I am, the two stories that come up the most are the stories that bookend Mr. Yoshino's experience at Toyota. The first, and they're both mistakes or failures that happened and really explain Toyota's culture around le learning to lead and leading to learn. The first was the, the paint story as it's known now when Mr. Yoshino as a young college graduate uh, made a mistake in the paint shop and a hundred cars had to be repainted and his boss didn't blame him and in fact thanked him for making the mistake. And then at the end of his career, which was the a big, you know, a, te a ten year long experience, a new business venture that ultimately ended in failure of the comp of the business being shut down. But the senior most person at Toyota, Mr. Cho, who was the president, saying to Mr. Yoshino, "It's not your fault. You, you know, you had to can you contributed to this. We contributed to this. We were all new to this new business, and so what can we learn from it?" And again, it just the, both of those stories, one on a small scale and one on a very large scale, really just illustrates this whole point and Mr. Yoshino's comment that the only secret to Toyota is its attitude towards learning. 